As the concrete fully complies with ACI 318.19, but what are the new code provisions that affected the software, and how was the software affected? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to review the new code provisions and how ASDIP Concrete was affected. Let's get started. This is a typical interaction diagram of a column. This line represents the capacity, the nominal capacity of the column. In X, we have the bending moment, and in Y, we have the uh, actual load. This point represents the maximum actual load, pure compression in the, in the column. This point over here represents the pure tension in the column. And this point over here is called the balanced condition, where the concrete uh, in compression fails at the same time that the steel fails in tension. For actual loads above the balanced condition, the column fails in compression. So this is called the compression zone. And below the balance condition, the column will fail in tension. So this is called the tension zone. Between these two areas, there is a transition zone where the type of failure is not well defined. This is called the tension control limit in columns. This is exactly what changed in this ACI 318.19. Here we have a concrete section with the rebars. And this is the strain diagram for the uh, tension control limit condition. The maximum compression strain is 003 per ACI. And here at the bottom, we have the tension control limit strain. Here at the right, we show the variation of the under strength factor phi versus the strain. For small strains up to the yielding, the factor fee is 0.65 if we are using ties or 0.75 if we are using a spiral. And this is a compression control area. Then we have a transition area that is defined by the tension control limit. In previous editions of ACI 318, this strain was 005. Now in this edition of ACI 318.19, the tension control limit has changed to the yielding strain plus 003. So the length of this transition now is fixed, 003, but in previous editions it was variable depending on the yield strain of the reinforcing bars. This new provision affects columns with high strength rebars. To illustrate the effect of this provision in the software, I have prepared an example. This is a column, rectangular column, with this interaction diagram. If we go to the design criteria, we can see here the applicable codes. The design is per ACI 318 19. We go to the materials tab. We have a specified regular uh, reinforcing bar, grade 60. So for this yield strength, this provision doesn't have any, any effect. For example, if we change to the previous code, Let's move this. If we go to ACI 318.14, we don't see any difference in the results. But now, if we change this to grade 100 KSI, we have this interaction diagram per ACI 318.14. Now, if we change to the current uh, code, we're going to see how this is going to change. So this changed like that. This is the effect of this provision in uh, the interaction diagram. Changes this area, which represents the transition between the compression zone and the tension zone. So this area changed uh, in, the new, in the new code. Another provision in the new code that affected the software is the calculation of the development length. Now a new factor is included in this formula this is called uh, the grade the grade factor and this factor accounts for the use of high strength reinforcing steel now the development length is larger for uh, higher grades for example for regular grade 60 or 40 the factor is 1.0 but for grade 80 
the factor is 1.15, and for grade 100, the factor is 1.3. So the development length can be affected up to 30% if we use a higher strength rebars. Another provision in ACI 318.19 that affected as deep concrete is the calculation of the concrete shear strength. The shear strength is composed of two parts. One is the strength of the concrete, which is called BC. And the second part is the strength of the reinforcing steel, which is called VS. Now the calculation of the concrete shear strength per ACI 318.19 is more involved than in previous editions of the ACI 318. The calculation now depends on both the shear reinforcement and the flexural reinforcement as well. So it's more complicated to calculate. For example, for uh, AV, which is the area of steel in, uh, in shear, uh, larger than uh, the minimum, uh, these formulas apply. Uh, option A is basically the same formula used in previous editions of the ACI 318. But for, uh, for the case where uh, the area of steel in shear is uh, smaller than the minimum, then the formula uh, changed completely. Now it includes a new factor, it's called the shape factor, calculated according to this formula. This factor takes into account the fact that the relationship between shear strength and section depth is not linear. In addition, here we have the factor rho w, which is a flexural reinforcement ratio. So the calculation of BC is more complicated now. We need to find out if the shear steel area is greater than the minimum or smaller than the minimum. If it's smaller than the minimum, then a new factor applies, and also the flexural reinforcement ratio uh, is involved in the formula. In particular, this formula, the option C, gives results much smaller than before, and that may affect the calculation of the stirrups along the beam, as we're going to see in an example. To illustrate the effect of this provision, I have prepared an example. This is a continuous beam, three spans, with uh, some different uh, uh, uniform and concentrated loads. And we have this uh, shear diagram. Let's see the shear capacity as well. We go to the design criteria, codes. The design now is per ACI 318.14. Let's do it that way first, and then we change with uh, 19 to see the difference. If we go to reinforcement, let's click on the design manager to let the program to design the stirrups. Design. And this is the design per ACI 318.14. So you can see that all these red areas representing the loads along the beam are inside the blue and the green areas representing the capacity. Green is the uh, capacity of the concrete, VC, VVC, and the blue represents the capacity of the stirrups, VVS. Please note the shape of this green area, which represents the capacity of the concrete, which is where we are discussing right now. If we go again to the design criteria and change the code, to 318.19 and let the program to design again their stirrups for, for the new code. Now this is the design per the ACI 318.19. It is completely different than what it was with the 318.14. Basically the difference is that the capacity of the concrete representing by the green area here is much smaller than what it was before and therefore this area is smaller as well so that the red area is inside of the of the green area if we go back to the previous code just for comparison purposes the design again you see how long this distance is this is because this concrete capacity is larger than what it was in 318.19 so this is longer, this is longer. Now, if we go to the new code, and we design it, you see that the capacity is much less, and this distance is much smaller as a result. 
With this, we conclude the presentation of the new provisions in ACI 318.19 in As Deep Concrete. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.